It's been 84 years. Hello fellow artists of the blue and welcome to my channel and also welcome to another sculpting tutorial. In this case I'm going to show you how to sculpt one of the trickiest things, at least for me, cloth. We are going to see how to tackle both flowing cloth, I'm going to do it on some ropes, but this is a technique that is perfect for doing capes as well, and also cloth that is sculpted over a solid surface. So let's get cracking. So for the flowing cape, what we're going to do is use one of these plastic Ziploc bags. I have one that is Warhammer branded because well, I, just, I just had it and I thought it was funny. Green stuff doesn't really stick to this. So this is what we're going to use. Still, we're going to put some water here to help with it lifting off. But yeah, we're going to flatten our green stuff on top of this type of plastic and then we are going to let it cure for a little bit. We are going to mix quite a bit of green stuff. I we need a lot of extra material here. You're going to see why in a minute. Once our beauty is fully mixed, we're going to flatten it to this kind of shape. Uh, we want to make like a curved section. So we're going to put it here. I want to make it quite thick. And again, as I said, I'm going to put some water into the plastic film and just press it down there. Put a lot of water on top because we're going to roll it down. Just use whatever cylinder shaped uh, object you have laying around. I want to make this quite thick just because it's easier to make all the folds if it's thicker. So the kind of shape we are talking about is this. We want to make like a half a circle there, half a circle on the bottom like this. We just want like a section of a cone. And we need to make sure that this is the proper length, which is it, it's maybe a smidge too tall. So I'm going to trim it down more or less like this. Once we have it, I'm going to, again, put some water on top and try to flatten it even more, making it a bit longer if we need to make it longer. This is the moment to shape it as well as possible. As I said, I wanted like a bit thick, like millimeter and a half or so. Yeah, I think this is going to be enough. So this is basically the amount of material you want. I think is going to be enough. Uh, I hope I'm right. The key now is once we have the perfect shape, we have to let this dry for about 45 to 40 minutes. The thing is you don't want to use the patty fresh because it's too floppy. See you in 45 minutes. When doing this, you will naturally end up with quite a lot of extra putty. Green stuff is expensive and we all hate to waste money, so a fantastic tip to preserve that extra putty is to put it into a Ziploc bag and put that back into the freezer. The cold will almost bring the curing process to a halt and when you are ready to sculpt again, just take that putty out of the freezer again, knead it a bit to bring it up to temperature and you will have perfectly fresh putty to keep on sculpting. A sculpting top tip for you. 45 minutes have passed and now we can start to build our cape. This is the most crucial part of all of the sculpting. So you have to be quick and you have to be decisive. There is no going back after you just start. So this is quite a scary moment, but it's not that hard. We're going to take out our cape. As you can see, it just pulls off pretty easily. This bit here is a bit more complicated than my mini because I have this thing hanging that I want to maintain. So I have to kind of slide this inwards underneath, something like that. And I have to push upwards. I'm going to use color shapers here, these rubber tools that don't stick to green stuff. And once you have it more or less tacked, so to speak, onto the model, you can start creating the shapes. In my case, I want to make this look like it's folded over the leg here. As you can see, there is a bit too much green stuff still, so I'm just going to trim it down. Once you have the shape more or less where you want it and you are happy with how the cape looks, you can start adding the folds more or less. 
we can enhance them later on with some more putty and add some more wrinkles and stuff like that, but for the time being this will be enough. Because the putty has been curing, it's harder and it takes the shapes really, really, really well. You can use your fingers to pull it off. I don't mind if it has some bit of texture from touching it, it's not that important. The most important and crucial thing here is to have the shape perfectly well defined. As you can see on the very top of the cape here, we have way too much material, so I'm just going to take it this all off. Just around the area where the belt is going to be. I'm pressing and driving the material upwards to take it off. And it's now looking way, way better. Much more happy with that. Again, we don't need to make all of the texture now, all of the wrinkles and stuff like that, we just need to sculpt the general shape. I'm pretty happy with how this is looking now, so I might stop. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave this to fully dry, and then I can refine all of the shapes a little bit better. The green stuff is completely cured, it's now time to start refining the whole cloth before we sculpt on top of it. And the first step is to take a cutter with a new sharp blade. And I'm just going to take away material where I don't want it. And then after the water, I'm going to smooth it out with my sandpaper. Don't be afraid of working on green stuff after it's cured. Uh, you can totally do it. Makes for a better result. You see, I fucked up here. <laughs> uh, when I was doing it, I off camera I tried to remove a bit too much of material and I poked a hole. Not a big deal. We're just going to trim it away, just like that. Making sure the profile and everything looks good. And I'm going to keep on removing material like this until I'm happy with the result. And don't forget to also trim the bottom edge so it's nice and sharp. A little bit difficult since this is very floppy, but be patient and you can very easily trim it. And once that is done, I'm going to take a sandpaper, this is 400 grit sandpaper, and I'm just going to smooth everything out. Some people say you can't use sandpaper on green stuff, you most definitely can. It's not as good as using it on something that is harder like milliput, but you can totally use it and it's going to give a smooth and very good looking result in the end. Once you're happy with how smooth your green stuff work is, your first layer, we can start sculpting the second one. And for this, it's just basically refining what's here and fixing all of these little mistakes. For example, we have a little bit of plastic showing and an ugly hole. This is the area that I messed up previously. So I'm just going to extend this green stuff quite a bit. First of all, integrating it into the previous layer And once I feel it's integrated, I'm just going to smooth it out towards the top. If I have to smooth it quite a bit, or it's a lot of uh, putty, I like to use metal tools because they are harder. They do this kind of very intense work better. Here, there, he is going to have a belt. And for this, I'm just going to try to create that connection. I'm going to add more green stuff onto the belt area later. Right now I'm just trying to create that shape that the cloth gets when it's stuck under a belt. Taking away the excess and then I can go with my shapers and try to create some divots and a little bit of uh, cloth texture. You have to think of the first layer of green stuff as a kind of a, uh, of a canvas onto where you are going to sculpt the second one. And of course, always remember uh, that you can actually sand this down and smooth everything even more after this is dry. This area is a very good example of something that is missing. It just doesn't look right due to how green stuff behaves when you layer it on top of things. I'm going to use the second layer to create a more realistic cloth texture. Also, I'm going to fill that gap there a little bit so it's a bit more resilient. And I will just go around filling the gaps, uh, the small points, smoothing out and creating all of this cloth folds and a subtle texture all across the model. Mm -hmm. 
After the second layer of putty dried, I trimmed it again, very slightly here and there and sanded some bits here and there again to smooth it out and make it as smooth looking as possible, but I'm really really happy with how this looks and I even started sculpting the top section which is already dry and now I'm going to show you how to sculpt cloth that is on top of a solid layer here on this last side. A sculpting cloth that is on top of a solid layer is way easier than trying to sculpt cloth that is flowing because while well, you have something to back up, something to push onto, I put the putty in a more or less the shape that I want it to be and now with a clay shaper I press it down so it, I'm sure that it sticks very very well to the underneath layer and then for cloth I actually prefer to use a steel tool for the main shaping. The most important part when you're sculpting cloth is trying to get it as realistic looking as possible. And for that, there is no tricks really. You just have to learn how cloth flows and try to understand the process. But it's very simple. When it's not flowing onto the wind, it's a very simple process really. It's just, well, shaping it. In this case, as the torso is twist it on this direction and the arm is lifted off. I'm not going to sag this side as much as this one because with the natural motion of the torso, this piece of cloth could be tighter against his chest naturally. So I'm going to try and accommodate for that. Steel tools also have another advantage when you try to integrate new putty onto existing one because it is harder. You can push the putty and you won't leave a noticeable gap I'm going to sculpt some folds here because with the arms so uh, uptight, this cloth here towards the towards the top should be wrinkly. Then for the open bit, I'm just going to go around making sure there is no putty onto the uh, eagle in the center. So we have a nice clean look and I'm going to sag it a little bit, pushing from the inside out, something like that. I think I'm pretty happy with that. It looks looks realistic enough for me and I'm happy. Once I have a shape that I'm happy with, I go back with my rubber tools and I just smooth out any sharp edges and stuff like that, that the metal tools can leave, making sure that everything is as smooth as possible. And that's it. It's really not a complicated process at all. It is a bit involved, especially for the flowing cloth, but if you go step by step and are patient, you will end up with an amazing looking piece of cloth. And remember, don't be afraid of working the green stuff once it's fully cured to make your sculpts even better. Thank you for watching this tutorial and don't forget that if you like my videos and want to help me make them, you can follow me on social media. You have the links to all my social media in the description below and in the pinned comment of this video. Share and like this video, but most importantly, there is Patreon and channel members. Patrons and members allow me to do all the cool videos that I want to make, and most importantly, they allow me to release them all for free here on YouTube. Perks include access to an amazing Discord community full of lovely people, early access to some of the videos, and now also private one-on-one -on -one online tutorings. You have two tier options for those, 45 minutes and three hours a month. They are filling fast, so if you want to have a private tutoring with me, don't hesitate and join now. Help me and my family enjoy the list of the coolest persons on the planet, including Kero Skuris, Giovanni Costanza, Martin Pasco, Alejandro Madonado Fuentes, Terry Dunham, Robert Smith, The Rhinosaur, Heather Amster, Greg Osborne, Howard Hotbill, Chris Goldenthal, Carlos Rivera, Thomas Ustergaard, Javi Mota, Matt Arkinson, Christoph Moret, Victor Domen, Nicholas Furnell, Brendan Smith, Alfredo Phillips, Tino Uchida, Stephanie Owl, Nick DeMau, David Sutherland, Robert Nilsson, Tasted, Oscar, Jonathan Thornberg, Dan Mako, Chris Talios, Jamie Milligan, Kevin Mian, Darcy Farrar, Chris Feige, Natius Maximus, Arundel, Gareth Smith, Mark Jarvis, Joe Simpson, Charles Armintans, G Force, Dr. V, Leonard Lindemann, Kieran Murthel, and Kevin Sullers. As for me, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!